Hi, I'm Dr. Tanvir Jenjua. I'm a board certified facial plastic surgeon. I would like to demonstrate some basic suturing techniques today. And this is mostly for my colleagues who are not in my specialty, but are pediatricians, are family physicians, and um, work in urgent care centers. And they call, get called upon to take care of simple lacerations, sometimes on the face. And um, some of them can do a wonderful job, but some would like uh, more education or help. Or it could be for residents who are trying to just teach themselves. So I will demonstrate some very basic things today. Before I go on, uh, preparation for repair of a laceration is very essential. The moment an injury happens, the very first thing would be to make sure the patient immediately cleans it with soap and water if possible, applies pressure, and if possible they have any antibiotic ointment, they can slap that right on there and wrap it with something before they show up for the repair. And, and then before you start, you have to have a plan for your local anesthesia which is very essential and for the local anesthesia the pain can be minimized with some few basic techniques. If it is a child that you want to make it very comfortable for you can apply Emla cream and wait. Uh, Emla is um, just one of the few different ones that can be used for um, anesthesia. You can use many other creams as, such as LMX and um, plain lidocaine creams as well. You have to make sure you do not apply the cream within the wound or can get absorbed very fast and cause side effects. It has to be on the intact skin around the area of the laceration. And once you're ready to inject, it's important to make sure you use the smallest gauge needle possible. 30 gauge would be perfect. And also if you use a 30 gauge one inch long needle, you can minimize the number of times you have to pierce the skin. And uh, when you use lidocaine with epinephrine, it will have a sting. To minimize the sting of the medications, of the medication, please buffer it with sodium bicarbonate. The ratio is about 1 to 10. So for, I would say, 9 to 10 cc of lidocaine, you can use 1 cc of bicarb. And then when you inject, don't inject quickly because the pressure of the liquid going in can also cause discomfort. If you inject slowly, talk to the patient, keep them distracted while you talk, then it makes it a lot easier. If you're dealing with a child, then you have to make sure you have them restrained really well by someone. And in that case, you can inject really fast if they're not cooperating so you get done. And then just wait. Make sure to wait for about 10 minutes for epinephrine to take its effect and cause vasoconstriction and uh, stop the bleeding in the area to make it easy for you to do the laceration repair. Also, um, lidocaine with epinephrine can be used in areas such as the nasal tip and the ear. Uh, that's contrary to what we have been taught sometimes in medical school that do not use any epinephrine in the nose or the ear, um, any acral parts, and, uh, but at least in the nose and the ear it should be no problem at all. Before I go on, uh, the model that I'm using, which I use for practice and uh, is easily available, I got it from uh, online and I got it from Amazon. I will show it to you. This is a silicone sheet model and it is as close to as skin as you can get. And uh, the best would be if you can get like pig skin or something else similar to that, or pig ears, you can practice on that, but if not, um, if you don't want to use that because of not being available or for humane reasons or personal reasons, you can use this model. It's very realistic feeling skin type model and it comes under the name of Mark True Skin. So it is made by Medical Accessories, Mark True Skin. and you can use it again and again as I will demonstrate with the stitching. At this point we will demonstrate repair of a laceration. In the model of the skin you can see that a laceration has been created and the superficial part is the epidermis and the deeper part red is the dermis. Underneath is the fascia and the subcutaneous tissues in case the laceration is going very deep. So the first repair has to be at the level of the dermis and that's where the strength comes in. The suture closure has to rely primarily on dermis 
and there should be no tension placed on the skin. If the skin is under tension and apart, then the wound will not heal properly or the sutures will leave marks behind called the railroad tracks. So let's start first by demonstrating the repair using um, a 5 of vicryl in the dermis of the facial skin works very well and it is important to know how to hold the needle so you hold it at the junction of the first one third that's the proximal one third and the distal two third at that junction and once you hold it I'm right handed so I'm demonstrating the right side then you use the pickups and you use the pickups to hold the skin not just the epidermis but the dermis as well and now you go from inside and come out without going through the epidermis so only the dermis you can see and then you let go with the left hand grab the needle let go here and pull it out then you can reload it at the same position now on the opposite side will go from above downwards or superior to inferior but at the same level right here so at the same level will go in the skin in the dermis and we are rotating our hand coming out and grabbing it right there perfect so now once you've done that we pull back leaving some tail and now we can throw our first loop to close it then one more and one more and one more for vicryl three knots are usually sufficient four would be perfect I am using uh, proline just for demonstration purposes in reality I would use 5 o vicryl for the dermis and we do not need to leave any tail behind so all the way down and we can cut it once we have placed a few of these stitches the skin should be in good apposition which means if you try to pull it apart it really shouldn't come apart like here so when you're trying to pull apart it shouldn't or in essence you really shouldn't see any separation of the wound edges as you see right here once this is achieved now we can do a skin suture using 5 proline and I like to have it in a running fashion just to make it quick and easy so for that the first loop starts from the top of the laceration we will pretend the laceration starts right here so we go from the top and the movement is this way so we can hold it and now we are going in about three millimeters to the edge bringing it out and then grabbing it now exposing the skin and we're going from inside same depth as the other side and then coming out about three to five millimeters and now we can place the knot and with proline I would use six or proline on the facial skin and I would do about five to six knots and then leave a short tail behind now I will run it in a loop to achieve a little bit of eversion of the skin we can always enter at an angle where we go in and we are going deep and recruiting more skin as we go inferiorly so when you recruit more skin as you go inferiorly and less from the outside you will pull the underlying tissues together and hence raising the edge and that's what we will try to achieve because eversion helps in the healing process now we hold and we take more from below and less from the top and that will give a little 
mild eversion effect and we keep running the loop And once you've come to the end of the laceration, then you'll do a loop tying with knots, just similar to what we started in the beginning. We tie it around this loop. Okay, and now we're done. So that is your simple closure, which would be a running simple closure of the skin. And the main goal is to approximate both edges at the same level and get a little bit of eversion if possible. But this is not to keep the skin together. The deep dermal sutures are to keep the skin together. These stitches should come out on the face in between five to seven days, no longer than that. And for the wound care, patients can either wash it with soap and water three times a day and apply an antibiotic ointment, or they can use hydrogen peroxide to clean it three times a day and then apply antibiotic ointment. After the stitches come out, they have to be religious about using sunscreen every single day.